So today in lecture, we are going to have, uh, we're going to be talking about resumes and the debugger. So some administrative notes, um, you have two extra assignments for Project 3 MVP, as you know, um, the individual, which is rated feedback about your peers, and the group, which is screenshots of your tests and coverage and stuff. The reason you have this is, again, I apologize for giving you assignments two weeks after it was already due, but the individual was just because we didn't get very high quality feedback from most of you about the peer feedback. So it's hard to judge or assess whether people were doing like a fair share or they were working well with their peers or not. So we want a more objective way to do this, which is basically saying, hey, how did you feel working with these different people? Um, with the group stuff in terms of screenshots um, and coverage and stuff, that was just me forgetting to include that in the submission form. So now we're going to be including that in, in addition. Um, it is absolutely essential that you do this by tonight. It is not optional. It is very important that you do that so that you can actually get accurate grades for your Project 3 MVP. Um, today's lecture is optional, so there's no attendance credit, um, but hopefully you learn a lot along the way anyway. Um, these are going to be fun topics that are just going to help you learn a little bit more about how to be good at your jobs and how to get a job. Um, you will need Cloud9 or an IDE of your choice for today's demo, so go ahead and get that fired up. Um, also good news, I finally got my, I, my Cloud9 back up and running, like they reactivated my account. I had to go through NJIT and like we have like an Amazon rep that works with us, but now it's working, which means that your Cloud9s are probably doing better now too. Um, so sorry about that like delay of the, those last five, four or five days, um, but your, your things should be better now. Your Cloud9 instances should be running more, like back to normal efficiency. Um, yeah, it's not really my fault. I had no control over that, but I apologize nonetheless. Um, cool. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is resumes. So what's the purpose of your resume? Let's start by asking about that. Um, who reviews your resume? Who is, for the most part, looking at your resume, and what are they looking for? Anybody have ideas on that? Hiring managers, okay. So we might see some hiring managers who look at your resume. Anybody else who looks at your resume? HR, I have very seldom heard of HR actually reviewing your resume. Um, so we have hiring managers or program manager or project managers, okay. Um, recruiters, okay. And we also have team leads here. Okay. Um, cool. And then, yes, software, sure. Um, parsing software, definitely true. Okay, cool. Um, what are they looking for? What are people looking for in a resume? Okay, work experience, skills. What else? School, okay. School or education, classes, whatever, okay. Okay, cool. Um, these are good starts. Um, let's go over some misconceptions that people are having. First of all, when you're looking at who is reviewing your resume, in order of people who are most likely to review it, um, I'm actually going to change my color here. Parsing softwares are going to be number one. These are going to be the primary things that look at your resume. Um, parsing softwares are going to review more of your resumes than any other um, means. Um, next most common is going to be recruiters. Recruiters at big companies, um, for the most part, recruiters look at your resumes. Um, if you're at a small startup, usually it's a sourcer who looks at your resume. And then lastly, you're going to see hiring managers, project managers, tech leads, all those people. Um, I have never heard of HR looking at your resume. That's not really a thing I've ever heard of. That's not usually in HR's like prerogative to do that. Um, but usually it's um, parsing softwares, then recruiters, then 
maybe hiring managers and engineers and stuff. Uh, for context, I have done over 100 interviews at Facebook um, for, for potential candidates. I have never looked at one person's resume in depth, and I've never asked a single question about someone's resume. Um, that's not something I care about. What I do is recruiters tell me who to interview, and then I ask them technical questions. I don't really need to know whether they're qualified because they wouldn't be sitting in front of me if someone else hadn't determined they're qualified. I don't need to like revalidate that they're qualified necessarily. Um, so make sure you're thinking about this um, as, first of all, you have these parsing softwares, so you want to cater to them. Then you want to cater to recruiters. Then finally, you want to cater to tech leads, project managers, and hiring managers. Um, why does that order matter? Why does it matter that um, recruiters are going to be the people who are actually reading your resume manually? Because they are different from engineers. How so? How are they different from engineers? Right, you can maybe be a little less technical, okay? And you also want to make sure that not only are you being less technical, but you want to be more impact driven. Because if you say like, hey, I, I built this really cool technology using, I built this really cool app using Redux, engineers are going to be like, whoa, he knows Redux. Redux is a really complicated and hard technology to learn. That's awesome. But if you present this web app that has one button in it and you're like, I built this using Redux, an engineer might appreciate it. But then someone in um, HR, or sorry, someone in recruiting isn't going to look at that and be like, whoa, he built one button using a hard technology. They're gonna be like, okay, it's a button. So the things you highlight on your resume, if they're not impact driven, then recruiters aren't going to see it in the same way that an engineer might or in the same way that you might. Um, and then in terms of what they're actually looking for, so this is, these are all objective things. You've talked about work experience, skills, and um, school education and classes. Let's be a little bit more specific on that, as, and I'll get into that in the next slide. But most um, commonly, what they're looking for is how your experiences and skills match up to what they're looking for. How how do the skills that you've been developing, whether they're through work, whether they're through school, whether they're through projects or research or whatever, um, how do those skills actually make you a good fit? And then secondarily, in our industry, of course, um, in other industries, it's a little different, but in our industry, school, education, classes, those come secondary to whether you're a good fit or not. So again, primarily recruiters are the ones that are looking at your resume. At companies without recruiters, you might see hiring managers themselves looking at your resume, or you might see external third-party sources, which is also a very common thing. And what they're looking for is, again, skills that translate well. I don't know why I said translate slash translate. Um, transfer. There should be skills that translate slash transfer um, well to your potential job functions. Um, you also want to, they want to see high levels of impact. And then they want to see experience collaborating, managing, or learning effectively. So again, even if you have skills that aren't specific to that job, they want to look at evidence that you have been impactful in the past, whether that's in collaborating, whether that's in learning, or whether that's in managing. So here are my tips about your, um, about your resume. Um, so make sure you have impact-driven writing. And what that means is format your resume, first of all, as bullet points. You want to highlight your impact up front. You want to front load the things that are impactful. And the best way to do that is bullet points that show what your impact is. Don't write paragraphs. Don't write in the first person necessarily. Just format it with bullet points and get right to the point. Identify what's special about yourself. Is it your projects? Is it your research? Is it your internships? What is the thing that makes you good at what you do and why should you get the job over someone else and highlight those sections at the top don't put that at the bottom because you've been following some for standard format or something like that just highlight the things that matter and are unique to you at the very top of your resume 
Um, of course, some people prefer education at the top and my recruiters always tell me to tell people to put education at the top. So just go ahead and put your education at the top um, and then put your work experience. But as you get more and more experience, you can start moving the education lower. Um, remove all generic information. So a summary or statement of purpose, that's completely useless to put in there. Your statement of purpose or summary is you want a job. That's the point of a resume. That's the exact same thing as everyone else. Every single person who has a resume and shows their resume to someone else wants a job. So why spend valuable real estate? Because it's only one page that you get. Why spend that one page? Like why spend three or four sentences talking about why you want a job? We know that you want a job. Um, and then I would say if you're running out of space, then take out your listed coursework. So instead of focusing on what coursework you did, focus on the projects you did in your coursework. So imagine if I had a resume where I worked at a hundred companies um, and I just listed the names of those companies. That's not very impactful, right? They don't care that I've worked at a hundred companies. They care more about what I did in those companies and what I actually, what's actually like impactful within those companies. So instead of listing your coursework, show what you did in your coursework. Um, Matthew, this is going to be a pretty open discussion. Just give me one minute to, fo to finish my last bullet, but then you can type in your question while I'm, while I'm doing that. Um, and then also focus on impact. So again, why do I care? Instead of the responsibilities, what did you do? So it's great that you talk about, you know, I built this in PHP and HTML, and it's great that you built a chatbot, but so what? What does that actually demonstrate? Why is this something that translates well to your actual job? And why is this something that would actually be useful when you're applying to Google? Why is it useful when you're applying to a startup? Why is it uh, um, applicable when you apply to Bain? Whatever company you're applying to, why is it applicable? And one more thing, have one standard resume. Don't cater it to different companies. Your impact is impact and you should highlight your impact and it doesn't need to change based on your job. Um, that's the point of a resume. It should be generic and it should fit for the entire industry. So if you're applying to engineering, you should have one engineering resume. Um, don't try to like make it different based on the company you're applying to. Uh, Matthew, what was your question? Do you still have a question, Matthew? Uh, I can't really hear you. Or I can't hear you at all. Oh, you can't hear me? Now I can. Oh, okay. Um, do you want me to type it out or just... You can just say it. Okay. So I have some courses where I didn't do any projects for that course. What should I do about those? Um, then what's the point of mentioning it really, right? Um, like maybe you can have a line with relevant coursework. What I don't like to see is when people have like five lines of relevant coursework, because I just ignore all five lines. If you have like two or three interesting courses, like maybe you have CS435, Advanced Algorithms, that might be a course that people care to see that you've taken. Go ahead and list that. Um, but for the most part, if you haven't done projects in those classes, then most people probably don't care that much that you took that class. Does that make sense? I understand. Okay. Cool. Um, awesome. Now let's do a resume review. So Denise sent me her resume yesterday um, and we've anonymized it um, just for the sake of like having this recorded and stuff like that. And I don't want to like put up real information on, on YouTube, but this is Denise's resume um, and we've just kind of anonymized it, took out her name, took out like any identifiable information. Um, we didn't really change anything else here. Um, so Denise, um, if you could unmute, I would love to have a conversation with you about a couple of things. Um, mm -hmm. So I haven't read your resume much yet, um, but I'm gonna scan it now. And I, I didn't want to read it ahead of time because again, as a, as a person in tech, as someone who might review people's resumes, the way I review it is basically going to be to look through your resume and I'm gonna walk you through what I actually do. So I'm gonna look at your name, cool. I don't even care about all that stuff. I'm looking at your objective. I'm just literally ignoring your objective. I look at your education, I literally ignore your education. I don't really care. 
Um, now I'm going down to the important stuff. I'm like, okay, experience. So Denise feels that her experience is the most important thing. Otherwise, it wouldn't be um, the first thing I care about. It, projects would be first if, um, if those were more, experience, more um, impactful. So she's been a classroom assistant. That's great. Um, she tutored, to, tutored um, students. That tells me something. That means that she has been collaborating. She has worked with other people. Um, and then based on this date, obviously, I don't remember what this date was. Um, Denise, do you remember what this date said? Um, it was, well, there's technically two dates, but September basically of this year. Okay, September of this year. Okay, um, so let's say that this was September 2017 to present, then that would be nice because I'd be like, oh, cool. Like, I've seen longevity. People like her in that position and people think that she's pleasant to work with. Given that it's September of this year to present, it's still nice that she still has that job. Um, it doesn't have as much impact because it's only been like two or three months. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying like for the future reference, longevity of these kind of positions helps a lot. Um, graded homework, cool. Um, communication liaison, okay, great. Um, and then we have a high school math teacher. Um, I'm gonna ignore the high school stuff. I don't care about high school things in general. So I'm just gonna skip over high school stuff. Now we go down to projects and I'm like, cool, chat away, public uh, chat room app, built and deployed a website where users can sign in with OAuth. That sounds really cool. Um, that sounds complicated. As a recruiter, I'm thinking that Google and Facebook login sounds really real life, right? It sounds like something that a real app would do. That's very cool. Publicly send messages to other users and interact with a chat bot. Okay, chat bot sounds really cool. That sounds wonderful. And then technologies used, okay, I don't know what any of these are, it doesn't matter, but I've heard of React, I've heard of HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript, that's cool, Python, I've heard of some of these. Um, AWS, that's something that I've heard of. And then the link, this is great. I'm just going to actually click on that link and see what's actually happening here. Then I go down to research, I'm seeing undergrad uh, research in, um, thing, I don't really know what this program is, I don't really care. Um, Whoa, there's like ferrofluids and like all kinds of stuff here. Um, using MATLAB. I've heard of MATLAB, so it seems like computer science experience. This is very, very cool. Um, introduction to TensorFlow. I don't know what TensorFlow is, but that sounds really cool and impressive. Um, so this sounds very cool to me, this research um, experience here. How long were you in this position, Denise? Um, six months. Okay, six months here. Um, and it wasn't, it's not ongoing, right? It was in the past? Yeah, it was in the past. Cool. And then I'm going, going down here. Um, I don't care about the skills right now because I've already had a resume parser who has run through the skills and told me Denise is a really cool candidate. Why do I care about reading the skills? Doesn't really matter. Um, someone has already flagged that these are good. So this is a check. I don't really care about that. So when I look at this, I'm seeing this is a very cool experience. Um, this seems like a really cool project because there's like specific things that are real world implementations here. And then some experience here, you know, understanding concepts, tutoring. So this is like some mentorship, um, some communication liaison. And then I don't really care about this at all. Um, cool. So these are just my overall thoughts as I read through this, because I'm just like, I'm just reading through it in literally like 10, 10 minutes, maybe not even 10 minutes. I'd say two minutes is how much time I'm dedicating to a resume. Um, before we get started on that, um, Denise or anyone else, do you have questions about my thought process as I run through the resume? Um, yeah, I have one question. So um the experience that was irrelevant to like the high school teacher stuff i should remove that in the event that i like add the project that like project three on my resume like it's not even worth mentioning yes um i i would take out anything high school from your resume um and i would fill it with other things that you have experience with whether it's research projects um whether it's anything else pretty much um because high school tells me like if you're a senior and you're putting high school things on your resume, that means you didn't do enough in the last four years. Oh, that that, so that high school thing, that was actually, like, I was a teacher for, like, I was a high school teacher. Oh, you were a high school teacher. Okay. 
So this is interesting. Um, the way that I read this was you did something in high school. Um, so maybe we just need to like change things, uh, change the wording of this a little bit. Um, so it says high school math teacher. Now it's very clear to me that you were a math teacher there. Um, I would probably do something like change this to be something like instructor at or teacher at high school, uh, missionary high school. Um, so maybe we do math instructor at missionary high school because think about it this way, Denise, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, oh, cool. Missionary high school. She did something in high school. I don't care about this. Instead of saying, oh, she was an instructor at high school. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, now that's good to know that this might be more relevant. So let me reread this. Um, design lesson plans for these classes, organized activities, um, and assess daily student progress. Okay. Introduce students to graphing calculators. Okay. Um, this is still not super relevant to computer science, but I see the merit of it because again, you're showing collaboration, you're showing mentorship and stuff like that. This is still less relevant to you as a technical person um, who's new to the industry. So what I would do is start highlighting the actual things that are showing your technical prowess. So Denise, in terms of what shows that you are good technically, what are the things that show that you're like, you've done some cool stuff before? Um, like in the whole resume? In the whole resume, not just the whole resume, in, in your career at NJIT, what has been unique about what you've done? Um, honestly, probably the stuff from this class. Um, before this class, I hadn't really made any like real projects cool. um, and the research. Okay, so we're talking about the projects as important things and we're specifically talking about CS490 here. Um, this is going to be pattern, this is going to be a very common pattern Many people have already gotten jobs because of projects from this class. So like, feel free to list your projects. Um, in this class, I built the projects to be impressive on your resumes. They're specifically meant to be on your resumes. So go ahead and put your um, projects one, two, and three all on your resume. They're all, um, they're all very um, useful things to put on your resume for different reasons. Now, when we think about our projects, um, so, Let's talk about the importance of each of these. So let's build, let's start with the most impressive one. So Denise, the most impressive project presumably was your project three, right? Yeah. What was your project three? Um, we're creating a, an app that helps a distribution center like function. Um, we, have a, we have a nice like mission statement. <laughs> but I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Basically, Lord. we're providing resources for distribution centers to um, like run online. Got it. Um, are you in Abdul Kudus's group? Yeah. Okay, um, I was literally reviewing his resume like 30 minutes ago. Um, so <laughs> you can actually work with him and talk about what um, he put on his resume for this application. Okay. Um, but let's, as a group, um, someone who's not Denise, what, what skills did we develop in project three that are going to be useful to highlight on a resume that are not things that every single person in computer science might have developed? And again, think about the technical things that you did. Okay, um, managed a project using source control. Okay. Collaboratively using GitHub, Git and GitHub. Okay. What else? Um, handling different branches. Okay, sure. Yep. Multiple branches. This is cool. What else? Um, collaboration, definitely. Um, collaboration is interesting. Just saying you collaborated doesn't really mean much um, because every, everyone does a group project at some time in, um, in their CS curriculum. But 
being able to demonstrate how you did it collaboratively is the important part. So saying you did Kanban and Agile workflow is cool. Um, what else is unique about this project that might really impress someone on a resume? PM leadership, okay, cool. PM leadership. And weekly check-ins with industry mentors, okay. Or instead of check-ins, what if we say, instead of weekly check-ins, we say weekly collaboration with industry engineers. Instead of mentors, we say engineers. Now it looks like you're working with them instead of working for them. There we go. Um, we divided work by logical parts, okay. Um, well, like, I mean, that's just part of collaboration. It doesn't really matter. Um, the actual impact it has, your impact, you have no impact. Um, these projects are clearly not going to be impactful because you're not actually deploying them. But that being said, the potential impact that it has is very important here. Potential impact. And then one more thing that I would say here is you built this in five weeks. Highlight that. You built this in five weeks. You built a fully working app with testing. And oh yeah, we didn't talk about testing. So you took five weeks to build this app from scratch, um, ideology to creation in five weeks, and it does these things and it could have this potential impact. Three weeks for MVP, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, three weeks, five weeks, you can, whatever number you wanna put in there, you can put in there. Um, so these are all really cool things. The way that I would prioritize these is, I would say that this is your number one thing that you should highlight. Um, basically combine the fact that it was five weeks with your potential impact, and then talk about your collaboration and agile flow all in one bullet point. So this might look something like um, built a project that does this in five weeks, with collaboration with other students and engineers in industry from industry using Scrum and agile methodologies. That's your first bullet point. You say, you built this thing that does that thing in five weeks with collaboration with these people, and here's why you should care. And now you've hit the buzzwords, you've hit Scrum, you've hit agile. You've, and if you have your engineering industry from a company that is pretty famous, which most of you do have, um, then go ahead and list the name of that company. You can say with Google engineers, with an engineer from Google. Um, now suddenly you have a lot of impact that you can point to and be like, holy crap, this person worked with someone from Google using Scrum and Agile to build this cool project in five weeks. This is an impactful bullet point. Does anybody have any questions about that first bullet point? Yeah, um, this is the kind of stuff that I want to see on a resume. This is what turns something like, hey, I built this thing into, oh my God, this person did something amazing. And like, I've seen Denise's project. It's a really cool project. I've seen most of your projects. Most of your projects are pretty cool projects. Um, you can always be able to put stuff like this on your resume, which basically is more impactful than I built this thing that does, does this one thing. Talk about how much time you did, because that's impressive that you were able to build this in five weeks. Talk about who you worked with. 
Talk about what methodology is used. Talk about how you actually worked with someone from Google or Uber or Facebook. These are things that are actually going to stand out in comparison to other people. What's our second bullet point now? So we've talked about our impact. We've talked about why you should care about that. Um, what's our second bullet point going to be? Okay, sure, somewhat. Um, I wouldn't necessarily just say it's the tech involved, but I would say there's, um, there's more to it. So our second bullet point is going to be tech stack-ish. But more so than talking about the tech stack, let's talk about the methodologies and the philosophies that you used. So don't talk about HTML and CSS, no one cares. Um, doesn't matter if you built this in HTML or CSS, you've already listed those things. But let's talk about the tech stack involved. And how can we do that? Any thoughts on that? Everyone's still typing. Um, you can also just unmute and let me know if you have any, any thoughts on how to get started with that. Um, okay, MVC, developed with Flask Python backend with React.js frontend. Again, I don't care about that. It doesn't matter that it's Flask or uh, Python or React.js. Like, those are cool, but that's not the most important thing. MVC, that sounds a little cooler. But what if we say this project embraced, actually we can cut out this project, embraced modern technologies, modern um, philosophies of development by engaging in, and then now we can say something like, um, MVC design patterns by, uh, or not engaging in, by using, let's just say by using the MVC design pattern, um, mock frame, mock testing framework um, industry style linting Um, whatever other things you want to talk about here, um, um, production deployment, continuous production deployment, um, let's see, separation of databases, separation of um, prod and dev databases, That's probably good. So talk about these and then say used. Um, and then we can actually break this into a third bullet point used Flask, React.js, Python, whatever, dot, 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 to, um, to, I don't know, uh, we could probably say something along the lines of, we use these technology stacks to ensure that we are using modern principles to um, embrace modern technologies. Okay, cool. So this tech stuff is okay, but again, the tech stuff should be secondary because the first thing that you wanna talk about is the impact. That, that first bullet point is pretty much the only bullet point that people actually care about. And the first one is going to be the one that they read. So make sure your first one is writing all the stuff that is really cool. So if you worked with someone from Google, write that down. 
If you worked using Scrum and Agile, write that down. If you built something that has impact, write that down. Then secondly, you can start talking about the, uh, the technologies, but even before you talk about the technologies, talk about the design patterns, the philosophies, how you influence these philosophies by making sure you're embracing these modern standards. And these bullet points are for the engineers, so they're secondary. These bullet points aren't the things that you necessarily have to have a recruiter look at, but if an engineer looks at this, they'll be like, whoa, this is advanced stuff. They're doing some really cool stuff. Um, the more important thing is be ready to discuss this in an interview. So this part is all stuff that will come up during your interviews. And you should be able to talk about the really unique elements of it. For example, using mock testing frameworks, using linting, um, and being able to say, hey, our code adheres to Airbnb's code standards. That's a cool feeling to be able to say, like, I wrote code that Airbnb would, okay, would be OK with. Um, continuous production deployment, separating your prod and dev databases, um, doing your MVC design patterns, and making sure that you don't um, conflate these different things and you're federating your logic correctly. These are words that are important to use because these words mean things to engineers. They don't mean anything to recruiters and they're just gonna ignore these bullet points. But that's why you have the first bullet point which shows the impact. Any questions so far about what we're doing? Cool, um, in that case, let's jump back to Denise's uh, resume. Now let's talk about the computer science classroom assistant. Denise, um, if you could unmute, can you walk me through, like now with these principles in mind, what is impactful about the classroom assistant? How can you reframe that to show that it's really special and unique? Um, let me see. I guess the first thing that I would want to I don't know. I, I wouldn't say like the technology is, is probably the most impactful. It probably is, it's probably how I was able to like help the students. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think that, well, what is the, like, if you had to summarize why this is different than other people who are applying to this job in one sentence, why is this experience going to help you land a job? Um, because I'm able to communicate, um, like I'm able to communicate things in a way that'll have someone else understand. That's a good one. Um, you can communicate things in ways that other people can understand. But let's be specific about what those things are. What does things mean there? Um, well, in, in this case, it was like misconceptions or um, like understanding like how to program in Python or Java. Yeah, but you're underselling yourself. Um, is this work that you had written and is this all homework that you had already done before? Um, not all of it. Exactly. So people are coming up to you with unknown problems that you've never seen before, possibly in languages that you've never heard of before. You've definitely never done all of the stuff inside of there and you are on the spot trying to help them debug and figure out answers, right? Right. That's a different story than the one that you just told me, right? Yeah. Um, so that's what I want you to think about. Like when you're thinking, thinking about the, um, the actual impact that you had and what skill is transferable to industry, like in industry, you're not gonna know the solutions all the time. And that's what you wanna highlight here with the classroom assistant. You wanna basically say, People came up to me with these questions that I had no idea about. Like I had never seen these kinds of um, these kinds of problems before, and I was able to navigate it effectively with them and help them come up with those solutions to these problems that are that I'm unfamiliar with. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, so that's the kind of way that I want to reframe this. Instead of saying what we did, so here this first bullet point is the what. But let's talk about the why and the how. So again, you have to talk about the what eventually. But again, like what we did here was we talked about the what 
by saying, built this thing that does this. And we say like two or three words. It doesn't really matter what it does, but the why and the how is very, very cool. And that's what we want to talk about here. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. And then one last thing that I would say is um, your projects are going to be the thing that highlights your technical powers. So let's move that to the top here. Um, education comes first. Um, kill the objective completely. Um, you don't need that at all. And then I would basically say education is first. For you specifically, projects are second. Experience is probably third. Um, well, where's, when did you do this research? Um, this was last year. Okay, cool. Uh, that's kind of a toss up then. This could either be three or four in my opinion. And then this would be the other one. Um, last year is fine, but you only did it for six months. So like, I'm not sure if we'd want to do that higher or lower. Um, I would probably stick with research being third. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. I'm going to say three here and then four for experience because you want your resume to read as, hey, here's all the technical stuff I did because the technical things are the most important part of your resume at this point in your career. And then you go into your experience, which is mostly about the mentorship and collaboration, which is important. It's nice that you work with other people effectively, but it's not as important as the technical things. Okay. And then one last note that I have is Let's try to add. Um, let's try to add numeric things. Let's actually be able to measure everything inside of here. So instead of saying tutored students, put a number here. Tutored twenty five students. I don't know how much that number is. Um, don't make up those numbers, but like get some amount of numbers there. Instead of saying graded homework, put a number here. Served as a communication liaison. Um, that sounds good to me. Um, same with, for example. In our project where we talked about the distribution center, oops, I am frozen again. Okay, so same with down here when we talk about our distribution center. Talk about these numbers. We already have five weeks in here. Um, instead of with other students, let's take out this and say with four students and an engineer from industry, and then inside of here that does this, talk about what numbers are actually impactful here. So maybe this um, links up to 50,000 employees with commercial distribution chains. Something like that. Um, it doesn't mean that 50,000 employees are actually using it, but you've stress tested with you've stress tested it with 50,000 people or something like that. Now, this is this certainly reads a lot more um, professional and a lot more impactful than just saying some it does some commercial distribution stuff. Being able to throw those numbers in there and being able to say, hey, I have a quantity of people who are able to use this if they wanted to is going to be a lot more impactful. Um, those are my biggest tips. So make sure that, first of all, you think about, there's no standard um, format for what should be at the top or bottom or anything like that. My suggestion is education at the top, skills last. Somewhere in between, you have your experience, projects, and research, depending on how good your experience is. Um, like, if you've done internships at, com at tech companies, that should go first. That is by far the most impactful thing you've done. If you haven't done that, probably your research is second, um, and then probably your experience. Whatever gives you the most technical um, power, like the most technical development you have goes top to bottom, um, and then the non-technical things can go at the bottom too, at this point in your career. Um, make sure you don't go over one page. If you need extra, extra space, take out some of this. Um, so you don't need the relevant coursework necessarily. You can take out a good amount of these. Um, like you probably don't need numerical linear algebra, probability and statistics, um, Linux programming, maybe you want numerical analysis, you can probably take, to, uh, take off too. Those don't really matter that much. And suddenly you have an extra line of code. Um, people know that you're taking math classes. When they see you're doing a double major in computer science and math, 
they know that you're doing math classes. You don't need to list them out necessarily. Okay. Um, any other questions, Denise or anyone else? What, with experience, should we order it based on um, technical or based on date? Great question. Um, you have to do it in reverse chronological order. Um, so you definitely have to do um, your most recent first and then go backwards. If you have a recent experience that's not very helpful or like not very impactful, then just don't list it on your resume. Um, you have the freedom to do that as a student. You can't do that in the real world. Um, like you have to list everything that you've done. Otherwise people are gonna be like, what did you do for the last six months? Um, and that can raise some eyebrows. But if you are, if you have um, like something, like your most recent thing should be your most impactful thing. Usually that if you, if it isn't, there's like kind of a red flag. Um, but yes, you have to go in backwards order. That's just the standard. Um, so you do have to do that, but make sure that um, for everything else, like for example, these projects, you can just take out the dates and then just list them in backwards or you can list them in whatever order you want and that doesn't matter. Um, how should our resume evolve after we get our first job? Yeah, so after you get your first job, you should cut out like most of this. Um, like projects should no longer exist pretty much. Um, your experience, actually, I would probably phase out the things at the bottom first. So I would say you can take out your experience and replace it with your, uh, with your actual experience from your first job. And then you can start phasing out things as you go. I don't have anything from college anymore, obviously, because I've been out for five years. Like that would be ridiculous if I had college level things. Um, so make sure that you start doing that. Like basically as you get more and more accomplishments and more things that you've been able to do, start phasing out the least important things. So in this case, Denise's um, stuff would be like the math instructor or the mentorship in the computer science stuff. We ranked that fourth. So we would just drop that out of our resume and instead put more experience on top. Um, does that make sense, Andre? This is just basically a, this is basically a stack and we're just gonna pop out the last thing. Yep, um, or sorry, this is a Q pop. I, I forgot what, I don't teach 435 anymore, but you're gonna pop out the last thing, basically. Um, well, wasn't sure what you would leave, what would uh, leave the resume. Yep, pretty much the least important thing. Um, so the least important thing should be the end of your resume, besides skills. Um, and you just drop off the things that are least important. The last section, basically, is the one that gets dropped off. Um, why do we do skills last? I think the reason skills is even there is more for the parser. Right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so what Denise and Jason said was, yeah, this is just here for the parser. Like no, no human is actually going to read this. Like I've never read someone's skills. I've never like, wow, they said they were, they, uh, no react. I'm so impressed. I don't care if you say you know react. Um, the reason is these skills, you could just list something on there if you wrote hello world in react right that doesn't count as you knowing react the level that you guys do um but you can just learn hello world online for a few minutes and then you'll be able to list it on here um so yeah this is just to appease the parser like denise said um but it doesn't actually matter when a human is reading your resume um great any other questions on the resume stuff we're definitely not gonna get to debugging, so don't worry if we go over. I have an another question. Um, it's about uh, projects outside of class. Uh -huh. what, what do you think of those and what should we do about those? They're the exact same as in-class projects. Um, like, notice how in our projects here, this thing that we said here, we didn't mention that it was for class. We didn't say that. Don't mention that projects are for class. Don't ever do that. The reason I recommend against doing that is don't like, if you say that someone else came up with the idea, you're giving them the credit, right? But if you say, hey, I built this thing with four of my friends and I worked with someone and we were able to find someone from Facebook who was able to help us with, like build this, now you get all the credit of coming up with the idea yourself. Does that make sense, Matt? Yep, I understand. Yeah. 
So don't ever mention for these projects, don't say class projects, don't say like um, we built this in our software engineering class, just say you built it. Um, take the credit, you can uh, take as much credit as you can. And again, one thing that I'm teaching you here as part of this is you can, it, we're not stretching the truth, we're not necessarily lying here, but we're just wrapping it in a different context than what you're used to. Instead of saying, hey, we built this project in class, you're just omitting the in-class part because the in-class part is not the important part there. It's that the, the important part is that you built a pretty kick-ass project in five weeks. So focus on that part. Make sense? And just to be clear, I did this all off the top of my head. I didn't have like a plan for this or anything, but it's easy to do this when someone with someone else's work. Um, I struggle with this with my own work. So I find it very, very difficult for me to be able to be like, what was the true impact of this? So one big suggestion I have is, for example, um, Denise worked with a big group of people. She worked with Abdul and some other people. She and Abdul should bounce their resumes off of each other and they should be like, hey, can you take a look at what I wrote for the project? Like, does this sound good, good to you? And they can bounce it off of each other and then both of them are going to improve their resumes because they're gonna have outside perspectives. And if you have the same exact bullet point as your other team members, who cares? It's not plagiarism, you work together on it. So like that totally works for me and I highly recommend bouncing your ideas off of, off of your friends and other students so that they can figure out what is unique about what you did. Make sense? All right, um, let's pivot now and talk about debugging for the next like 10-ish minutes. Um, and of course, if you want like a personalized review of your resume, follow these instructions first and then come to my office hours. Um, I'm always happy to help with your resumes and I'm not gonna be working here that much longer for, I have about a month left at NJIT, but even after that, just hit me up on Discord or Instagram or whatever and we can just go over your resume. I'm always happy to help students. Um, like this isn't something that you need to have like a formal discussion with me about. All right, let's talk about debugging. We don't have too much time, but I am going to send you that. Um, yeah, I sent you my LinkedIn as well. Um, I like barely check LinkedIn. I probably check LinkedIn once every like six months, to be honest. Um, so hit me up on Discord or LinkedIn, or, or sorry, hit me up on Discord or um, Instagram before you use email or LinkedIn because I barely check email or LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, make sure you hit me up on those in my preferred way of communication. Otherwise you risk not hearing back from me for several months. Um, cool. So a common industry scenario is that you'll be thrown into a brand new code base that, you'll never, that you've never seen before. And you're asked to figure out what it's doing and how to use it in an hour. How would you do it? All you know is where the main function is being triggered and nothing else about that code. How would you do that? Anybody have suggestions on how we might actually figure out what this code is doing? So, there's three ways I would, uh, three things I would do. So okay. first you have to figure out uh, how the main function is being triggered. Okay. So uh, is that like a Java main function where it's called by the Java virtual machine? Um, is it called in a uh, separate code base? Sure, okay. What's number two? Number two is figuring out what that function returns, if it returns anything. Okay. And then what's number three? And number three is looking at function calls and that main function. So it would be number three, I would say. Okay, looking at functions or subroutines, okay. Now the thing is, this is, uh, this is a very good set of questions to answer. The way that we answer this in an hour can be complicated, right? So that's why we're gonna talk about debuggers today. So before we do that, let's look at this code. What does this code do? Anybody have thoughts on what this code does?
it gets a view. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Um, I told you to name your methods well. Um, this is not particularly well named. Um, but yes, it returns a view. But what does the view do? <laughs> It looks like a view for a, like a display for a location. Okay, yeah. Um, Luis, you're cheating. You're, you were in my 435. You've seen this code before last semester. Um, no, I'm just playing. Um, so yeah, it has a city name. It has locations, text. Um, it also seems to have fonts. It has images. It's basically showing a city inside of here. Um, fun fact, I wrote this code for my first ever Android app. Um, this was the first Android app I made. It took lo a location and then it returned like some thumbnails of that of like famous places in that city. That's pretty much what this app did. Um, so yeah, that's what this is doing. That sounds great. Of course, this isn't a great representation of the real world. It's just code on a slide that you can't really interact with. But how do we actually start understanding what the actual code does? Well, we use something called a debugger. So most of you probably have seen this button. You've seen the button next to the play button, but you've pretty much never used it. You never click on this, uh, this button. I'm here to tell you that this is the most important link, or this is the most important button that exists in your IDE. Um, this button will solve all of your problems for you. And I'm barely exaggerating there. Um, this debugger will basically let you do a lot of very powerful things that you haven't been doing probably for the last three years. So this is the most powerful way, um, bar none, to figure out what your code is doing. Uh, sorry, screen share issues again. Okay, so this is the most powerful way to, um, to figure out what your code is doing. And it's the most powerful way to trace bugs in your code. The debugger, the way that this works is it temporarily pauses the execution of your program until you tell it to keep going. You can basically stop the execution at any point, And then it will basically be like, hey, should I keep going here? Should I stop it here? Should I step into a method? Should I step out of this method? Should I, pr and you can even print the values of variables in their current state. Um, the first part of today's lecture is basically going to focus on how to use that button to understand your code easily and more efficiently. And of course, we only have seven minutes left, so I'm not going to actually show you how that works, but I am going to send you home with a YouTube demo that you can use, you can watch over Thanksgiving dinner with your family. Instead of putting the football game on, just throw that on your TV and you all can learn how to use the debugger together. We have, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful for you all. So I wanted to pass the love and give you, a, give you the debugging demo so that you can watch it together. Um, cool. Um, some key terms in debugging. These are very important. So this means step over. Step over means that you basically, you're at your current line. I use this one the most frequently of all of them. But step over means you stop at your current line. Just go to the next line. That's what step over does. Step into means whatever method is currently being called, step into that method. Step into the next line of code in the method that's being called. This pause play button means continue execution until you hit the next breakpoint. You add a breakpoint here by clicking next to that, uh, next to that line, and it will just add a breakpoint on line 515, which basically means continue the program execution until line 515 is hit. Once you hit that line, just stop right there and pause execution. And then this line means muting breakpoints. Make it so that none of your breakpoints pause execution until you re-enable them. Um, we don't have time for setup, so I'm probably honestly just going to end the lecture soon. Um, but at some point, I want you to do this. Um, so my girlfriend made a Tetris app um, like two, you know, four years ago. Um, it was one of the first apps that she made. Um, so you can actually go ahead and clone that. Um, so do git clone straight Tetris debug. Um, and then you should be able to play the button and you should be able to press the play button. And then you should just be able to play Tetris. There are lots of bugs. I introduced bugs on purpose. So see if you can find any bugs inside of there.
And then extra credit in my heart, not real extra credit because there's no assignment for this week, is think about how you'd restructure the code using MVC or other design patterns of your choice. And of course, like the code wasn't great. She wrote this a long time ago. It's not like her best work or anything like that. Um, but you can think about how you would actually restructure the code to make it more readable, more clean, um, and federate your logic more, um, more concisely. Um, there's a YouTube video from last semester where I actually gave a debugging talk. Um, so please follow this link. Um, it's in the slides. And you can actually watch that demo on using a debugger. It's about a 30 minute demo. So there's a lot of steps to it. But trust me, this is going to change how you do engineering for the rest of your life. Um, someone taught me how to use a debugger. And then until then, I was a terrible engineer. Once I learned how to use a debugger and once I learned how to use it effectively, I became one of the best engineers on my team. So this will literally make you like a black, this will be a literal like black and white difference between like, what you used to be able to do and what, you, what you're able to do now. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, just learn how to use a debugger and start learning how, like start embracing the philosophies of using a debugger wherever you can. Really, really recommend it. And I would watch this um, demo at some point. You don't necessarily have to do it during CS490. I'm not gonna test you on this. It's not gonna be something that comes up ever in this class, but if you're not using a debugger, you are doing something wrong and you're doing something inefficiently. Um, I have very rarely met people who don't use debuggers in industry where I'm like, you're a good engineer. So make sure you start learning how to do this. This is by far the most powerful thing in any IDE you ever work with. Um, the optional take home assignment is use debugging techniques to figure out all the bugs figure out all the bugs that are existing um, and there will be different bugs that come up and you can do that. Um, if you can't find the bugs yourself, just ask your family during your Zoom hangout this Thanksgiving. Just put it up on everyone's screen share and be like, hey, we're gonna do some, we're gonna take some time to debug my code. And I think your family would really appreciate that. So definitely really, really recommend doing that. Um, my, I know for sure my parents would really appreciate that knowing that they don't even know how computers work. Um, there's also the source code again. Um, you can go to my link here at Tetris Debug, and you can basically um, clone that and get started from there. Um, we already did our work time, so we've already taken our time to finish our project three submissions, and that's a wrap. Um, next time in CS490, um, well, first of all, enjoy your virtual Thanksgiving. I know it's going to be weird this year, but Hope you really enjoy it. I, I think that you can, we're gonna make the best of it and do what we can. I'm excited for making like, uh, for having like seven or eight different dishes for between the four of us, but we're going ham just for fun, no pun intended. Um, make sure you do your group and individual feedback. Um, make sure that that is done before today. Um, like it's very, very important that you do that. Otherwise we cannot give you your project one grades. Um, I'm not sure what else is left in the curriculum at this point. I think I have one or two more lectures left where I can cover um, technical materials, but I'll definitely think of what I want to cover for that. And then after we do those one or two other lectures, we're going to have one lecture where we do our presentations. So that's going to be our demos for project three. And then we have our last lecture, or sorry, our, uh, that's going to be our last lecture, our demos with the, with the entire class. And then the second to last lecture is going to be a revisit of lecture two. Um, so I already talked about that. We're going to revisit making an app from scratch. And we're going to talk about the principles that guided us and the philosophies that we've learned in this class. Um, hopefully you have learned a lot in this class. Um, I would be surprised if someone didn't learn a lot in this class at this point. Um, I, I would want to hear your feedback on why you didn't learn that for sure. Um, but Hopefully you learned a lot, and I hope that our second to last lecture will demonstrate exactly how much we learn. Um, I think I learned too much. Yeah, same here, join the club. Um, I learned a lot teaching this class too, um, and I learned all these technologies days or weeks before you did too. So I've learned everything that you've learned in the last four months along the way too. Um, cool, that's it, that's a wrap. Um, I'll see you guys on next Wednesday, and I'll take I'll, I'll let you go from here and have a great week and have a great, great Thanksgiving.